facility are... Her face reddened, the two of them shattering from view as blood painted the floor. I rubbed the back of my head as the blood slowly dried to the floor, distortions fading. Mari, I finally spoke, turning to her. Did you check the roster to see who she's up against in her chance? Subject O-111, Mari scribbled. Isa, zero class. She's not listed in the journal, no information on her. Oh, so she's new. I spoke slowly, fingers twitching at my side. That's... worrisome. Zero-class combatants are exceedingly rare and highly skilled, Mari wrote slowly. It's unlikely we could have helped O2 even if we had information on O111. So it's up to her, I sighed, nodding. She certainly seemed confident enough in her ability to win. That may be the danger. Mari jotted in the margins, eyes scanning me. I do not wish to say this, but we should account for the possibility she does not survive. I breathed heavily, grimacing, before softly agreeing and turning back to Alex. How about it? I spoke. In the event Lauren, Mari, and myself are killed, we'll need to be sure you can continue what we've started here, at least until you can find followers to pick it up. She swallowed hard. If that is how I can repay my debt, she spoke nervously. I will help you. I sighed before turning to Mari. All right, Mari, I spoke. Fill Alex in on the details. I'm going to find eight in the viewing room. Meet us up there. Mari nodded quickly, blood halo fluttering. I took off down the hallway. The screen flickered overhead as I entered the viewing room to find several subjects standing in loose groups. Eight was nowhere in sight. I glanced up to the screen as several eyes landed on me. O2, Lauren versus O111. Isa, it read in blocky text. Chance pending. The other figures in the room were growing visibly nervous in my presence, shifting edgily. I met several of their gazes and forced a painfully awkward smile as I tried to be sure Eight wasn't among them. Mari had said the crowd that usually watched the chances was a special breed of parasite. I imagine they had to be, to willingly watch their facility mates kill each other, let alone enjoy it. Her words did little to prepare me for the faces staring at me now, however. Everyone was more or less the same age, frozen at their current body type as soon as the parasite took over. That, in combination with the drab matching uniform, should have made everyone look more or less the same. But the cast of characters in front of me couldn't have been more colorful. One girl gazed out from behind massive glasses that were clearly for show, both because the parasite would correct any vision impairment anyone had and because the right lens was nearly shattered, a massive crack splitting it down the middle. Her lime green eyes were nearly hidden behind the reflective glass, a perverse grin slowly crawling up her face as she cocked her head. Much like Mari's halo, a string of sticky liquid lay suspended in the air around her, circling slowly around her neck, horrid jet black with churning steam spilling from it. Her number was 617. Her sixth class standing convincing me that whatever the liquid was, it was without a doubt some kind of ghastly poison. The way it bubbled and churned made me sick, and as her smile split into a grin, more of the cloying tar spilled from her mouth like saliva. Seven and six! She tilted her head with a slight twitch, eyes flashing to someone beside her. John, was it, there now? The girl beside her, 301, a taller African-American with long, straight black hair, just shrugged. Taser dude, another girl giggled, her dirty blonde hair nearly covering her dark brown eyes. Didn't expect to see you here. Surviving a penalty test. Weird. He just missed two eighth-class chances there now, John. 617 snickered, her hands clutching at themselves in front of her chest. Those chances always take the most distances. Gotta hack each other to pieces like animals, there now, don't you see? She swallowed to keep the black tar down through her wide smile, readjusting her glasses with twitching hands. Eighth classes, I spoke, looking back to the screen. 
Wait, do you remember the names? 617 swallowed hard, and then proceeded to laugh for several seconds. Destiny and Yui, I believe. She twitched, eyes flicking around my face. Hehe, <laughs> of course. Now it's just Yui. What's this? There now. Is that important? Why so tiled up, John the Taser Dude? <sighs> Forget about it. I shook my head, breathing out and taking one last second to look around the room before backing out. I am looking for someone to solve. Thought she'd be here. What was going on? Thank goodness, Eight wasn't one of the chance participants I had missed, but she said herself that she always watched the chances. Where was she now? I couldn't go looking for her around the facility. Dahmer wouldn't hesitate to tag me if I overstepped into another division where I didn't belong. My question was quickly answered, however, as I stepped outside the room to see Eight walking down the hallway in slow strides, hand clutched to her head. She looked as if she was in massive pain, so much so that her usually unyielding face was twisted in discomfort as she struggled to keep walking. Eight? I called out, beginning to walk towards her. At the sound of my voice, her eyes shot up, a sort of confused terror splaying across her face. I wasn't sure if my eyes were just playing tricks on me, but as her irises came into view, I could have sworn I watched them flicker with a sort of... static red and violent like a frayed TV image. She suddenly stumbled further, hands slamming against the wall to catch herself. As I ran beside her in concern and offered my hand, her eyes just flicked around wildly before again settling on me, another slash of static seeming to fray the very material of her retinas. This time, however, her body seemed to shudder, fear further painting her face. J John? She blinked in panic growing weak and falling forwards. I scrambled to support her, nearly losing my own balance. Y yeah I shook my head. It's me. What what's wrong? She shuddered, swallowing hard several times as if keeping down vomit. When she finally did speak, it was raspy and weak. Subject. Twelve. She gagged, eyes unfocused and wild. Where? Where is... Twelve. Twelve, I responded in confusion, trying to hold her steady. What do you what do you mean? Subject twelve? Callie? <sighs> Hostages. She shook her head slowly as if trying to figure out her words as she spoke them. John, John, wh where are we? She was finally beginning to steady herself, eyes clenched tight as she pressed her hands to her head. S Cersei Parsons. She finally spoke slowly and carefully. I am... R right I nodded, cautiously advancing closer in concern. That's your name? I hesitated, wishing I had more information to give her. You're... in... a, a facility, I grimaced. You're in a facility for left-hand parasites, a... your subject... 888. She softly nodded, but said nothing for a while. I... no, I get that. I'm fine. She finally spoke with slowly growing confidence. I apologize for the weirdness. I, I thought I had something I wanted to tell you, but I believe I was just nauseous. You... you asked me where we were. I continued, nervously letting go as she pushed herself away from me. That's... that's a scary question. Is something wrong? What, what happened? I'll get back to you on that. She blinked a few times before finally opening her eyes all the way. Tell me, John, do Godbearers experience headaches? Now that you mentioned it, I don't think so. I shook my head. After all, pain signals to the brain would have to be interpreted through the God Node, right? Agreed, she nodded. I can't say I remember the feeling of a headache since I was human. This makes the feeling that struck me while walking towards the chance room minutes ago all the more strange. Headache? I cocked my head. You think? I'll be sure to let you know. She shook her head before her eyes narrowed slightly on my face, her expression shifting. You look different, she continued. Have you always been so ghastly? I was taken aback, glancing down at myself before looking back to her. 
ghastly? I echoed, shaking my head. I think getting killed off by a parasite wasn't the best thing for my complexion, if that's what you mean. It's different since when? I'm not sure. She furrowed her brow, her feet slowly backpedaling now. She seemed to be losing herself deep in thought. I... I don't believe I will be present for O2's chance, she continued, talking to herself more than to me. I have some tests to run. With that, she turned around, beginning to walk back down the hall where she came. I put out my hand, meaning to say something before being cut off as shouts of excitement came from within the viewing room. The chance must have started. I turned back to eight, only to see her long gone, my hand sinking down to my side. I tried to scrub the confusion from my face, taking a breath and shaking my head before sighing and walking back into the room. A chance to prove yourselves. I caught the end of Dahmer's speech. Your chance begins in three. I stared intently at the TV, coming to a stop beside 617, whose eyes flicked to me as a wicked smile split across her face. Her toxic saliva swirled slowly, her arms folding as she smirked and looked back to the TV. Two. Dahmer continued. I could see Lauren in the chance room, her cocky demeanor all too apparent as she simply stood with her hand on her hip. Her opponent was a similarly tall girl with shoulder-length bleached white hair, piercing mint eyes cold and lifeless. Around her neck hung what appeared to be a crucifix or other type of religious iconography. She didn't blink, stiff and emotionless. There now. 617 murmured beside me, peering slyly over her cracked glasses. I'm not the biggest rotor of zero-class chances. They go too quick. There's no fun involved, especially when it comes to O2. She doesn't give her opponent much of a chance. Pun intended, there now. She giggled. One. Dahmer's voice crackled. Begin! The viewing room fell dead silent, a feeling mirrored by the room on the TV. Lauren's eyes just condescendingly surveyed 0111, only showing a sign of change as the girl suddenly jerked into motion, hand raising from her side. The metal glinted harshly in the lights of the chance room, a sense of shocked disbelief instantly permeating the faces of every observer. She was holding a... gun? Lauren's eyes widened in sheer confusion for a good second before her disbelief broke into hysterical laughter. This was closely mirrored by 617 beside me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Lauren tried to compose herself, form flickering on the TV as she cocked her head, pointing to O111's hand. <laughs> I'm sorry, but what the fuck is that? O111's finger slowly clicked off the safety hand remaining impossibly steady in its aim. Glock 17. She spoke dryly. Lauren tried to contain her laughter, the sheer absurdity of the situation causing her to double over. <laughs> she shook her head, catching herself by putting her hands on her knees. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I mean, I get that you're new here, but are you stupid? She righted herself after some time, continuing to giggle. I, I can't, I, I can't fight you like this, are you fucking kidding me? Just what the fuck do you think I am? Dead? O-111 responded coldly. Most likely. Lauren giggled, shaking her head. One bullet in the chamber. O-111 continued with a voice that dried the air around it. Another in the mag. One for your skull. One for the parasite at the base of your spine. The monster controlling your corpse. <laughs> Lauren scoffed, amusement still present. Well, you clearly know enough that you should understand how ridiculous what you're doing is, so I guess I can kill you in good conscience. Her hand balled into a fist, clenching so tight that the skin flushed dead white. Her smile widened into a chasm, her eyes alighting as the bones of her fingers splintered with clouds of black distortions, her flesh suddenly ripping itself apart with a blinding spark of light. Prayer. Deflect. O-111 spoke calmly, not moving an inch. Lauren's giggles peaked as her flesh ignited, the waves of distortions erupting into brilliant flames, condensing into a pinprick point of searing light before rupturing outwards with a deafening explosion. The shockwave ripped outwards, the room searing jet black as floor tiles vaulted in every direction. 
I nearly lost my balance as the viewing room felt the shockwave of the distant blast, the camera fraying out of focus as the ground shook beneath everything. The flames were an impossibly violent pure white, roaring outward like water and blasting the entire room with distortive heat waves. As the flames turned to sickly black smoke, O-111 continued to stand motionless in the room, gun raised to her eyeline. The entire blast had deflected in a clean sphere around her, leaving a small circle of untouched tiles at her feet. Lauren, however, now stood in a massive crater of charred earth, giggles erupting to laughter as two blinding serpents of fire reared their heads up from within the black smoke. Lauren's skin was all but gone, slowly winding back together with boiling blood as she cackled. The tendrils of violently churning fire threatened to crack into another supernova at any minute, stemming from Lauren's back like nuclear reactor suns flimsily taped to a frail puppet. 617 giggled uncontrollably beside me. My favorite part, there now. She laughed. <laughs> Lauren giggled. Blackened, skinless face smiling a hideously toothy grin that stretched to her ears. I was just trying to be nice. She took a step forwards, floorboards liquefying at her feet as black smoke spewed around her like a dense fog. And I hate to be the one to tell ya. She cocked her head, skin beginning to tangle back into her face. The guns don't work on us, you moron! Haven't you ever been shot at? Oh, 111 remained stagnant taking a minute to adjust her sights as Lauren approached. Prayer, she whispered, min eyes narrowing to slits yet remaining utterly composed. Firebullet 1. The air seemed to crack with a preemptive shockwave, 111's eyes jolting with a flash of darkness before she slammed the trigger back. The world seemed to flash into slow motion, giving just enough time for Lauren's eyes to widen on the approaching bullet before the metal pierced directly through her iris, exploding out the back of her skull. She pinwheeled to the ground with a grisly thud, blood spewing out as her head shattered against the tile. Her flame tendrils were released from captivity, swirling into nothingness with another violent explosion. As O-111 again deflected the blast and the smoke slowly cleared, Lauren lay face up, one good eye frozen wide with shock as her hands twitched softly beside her, sprawled at awkward angles. Her silence continued for some time, the world seemed to hold its breath, before she let out a gut-wrenching shriek. You fucking bastard, my eye! She screamed, doubling over and clawing at her face. My eye! What the fuck? 617 gawked beside me, shaking hand readjusting her glasses. What the? My lungs just shriveled. How did she... Miscalculation. O-111 spoke softly, beginning to walk forwards. Shot one, unsuccessful. Her eyes narrowed again, gun landing squarely on Lauren's crumpled form, the air sparking with a slash of black as 111 murmured. Prayer. Second bullet fire. Lauren's eyes splintered open in fear, her limbs attempting to scramble before the deafening shot of the gun echoed out again. The tiles splattered with hot blood as the slash of molten lead again just barely missed a crucial part of Lauren's brain and stabbed her to the ground. She rolled across the tiles, her teeth gnashing, hand flinging out in a cry of rage. Distortions tore forwards, O-111 parrying to the side as an explosion ripped apart the air. What the fuck?! Lauren screamed, wrenching the bullets from her skin with distortions and scrambling backwards. Flesh ripping outwards as a plume of fire ignited with a blinding crack. Fight like a fucking man! She hacked the tendril with volatile speed, O-111's face not yielding in the slightest as she put up her arm to shield herself. Watching the limb get lopped cleanly off, serrated fire cauterizing the wound instantly. O-111 stumbled back, eyes not even watching her limb as it slumped to the floor, gun clattering to the ground. Clock exhausted. She spoke formally. Two bullets spent moving on to higher caliber and increased fire rate. Lauren was able to scramble to her feet, teeth gritting together she tore the gun in every direction with distortions and hacked again at O-111. Quit fucking talking to yourself! Lauren hissed, another tendril of fire exploding into view as O-111 stepped to the side. It's gonna take more than interrupting my subconscious redirection, I'm gonna rip you in half! This time, as Lauren's other tendril came down, O-111 again muttered to herself some command body flaying itself apart into a partial liquid, flesh tendrils slapping against the ground as she skirted to the side instantaneously. What? 
617 gawked beside me in the viewing room, again peering over her glasses as her toxic saliva dripped to the floor. What's that? Partial teleportation. I finished for her, not even realizing how tight my hands were clenched, beads of sweat matting my hair. I was cut off as another ear-splitting explosion rocked the room, Lauren hissing venomously as fire erupted into violent plumes and circles around her. Even with her instantaneous speed, chunks were being repeatedly blown off 111 until the girl was forced to scramble backwards, flesh tendrils stabbing into the tiles as she skirted across the room. Lauren took a second to breathe, teeth gritting together in rage. 0111 slowly retracted all but two tendrils, her jacket falling to the floor as she slowly pulled out what appeared to be two MAC-10s, fully automatic pistols. Her tendrils slithered to slam extended magazines into the weapons as she clicked the safeties off. Lauren staggered to a dead stop, flailing backwards. Cartridge 1 through 3, 0111 spoke coldly. Bullets 1 through 90 fire, prayer, remove opponent's legs. Lauren reeled backwards, yanking up floor tiles with distortions to greet the spray of bullets exploding from the automatic weapons. The tiles splintered in every direction, blasts of distortions flaying out in massive shockwaves, hacking bullets into the ground and deflecting them with blinding flashes of splintered metal. It wasn't good enough, however, blood spewing from gashes as a spray of blurring lead cut through Lauren's torso. She rolled to the ground, cursing loudly and throwing her arms out. The tiles around her ruptured in a massive fissure, buying her time as 0111 staggered to retain balance. The ammo exhausted itself quickly, but 0111's eyes just remained steely and lifeless. She dropped the cartridges with a loud clatter as more tendrils split from her back, stabbing the weapons from her hands and raising them above her head. Her own free hands now then reached at a covered sling around her back as the tendrils reloaded the weapons and steadied their aim. She slung the large covered weapon into her hands, raising the massive scope to her eyeline, only to flinch backwards as a jet of fire sprayed molten carbon at her feet. Her body lacerated as an explosion ripped upwards. Her limbs spiraled into the far wall, body splitting to gory pieces as she tumbled across the floor. Cocoons of fire followed the corpse as it tumbled, before exploding outwards as a shockwave of distortions dissipated them. 0111's mint green eyes constricted to cat like slivers as she stabbed tendrils into the ground to stop her roll, reforming crude limbs from flesh and bone. She raised up on her tendrils like a spider, cool and calm face showing the first signs of frustration. One of the tendrils cocked back the weapon in her arms as it reformed from broken and twisted metal. The shattered glass flowed back into the scope like water, and 0111 stopped cold in her stance as she breathed out slowly closing one eye and again raising the weapon. Lauren's face grew pale, having little time to react before metal clanked and 0111 slammed the trigger of the sniper rifle back. Lauren slashed up a tile and sprayed out countless distortions, falling back as the spiraling bullet cracked into countless pieces inches from her face with a deafening explosion of light. The shell from the 50 caliber round clattered to the ground behind 0111, tendrils reloading the weapon with blinding speed before she fired again. This time, there was no hope. Lauren's head shattered before she even recovered from the last shot. The massive round hole punched right between her eyes, an audible snap leaving her to spin limply backwards to the bloody tiles. Prayer, 0111 spoke softly, slinging the sniper rifle around her back again as her tendrils slithered, save Subject 02 from the unholy binding of this creature. She walked slowly and deliberately, casually bringing up one of the MAC-10s as a tendril dropped it in her hand. She walked until she stood directly over O2's crumpled form, clouds of blood fighting to piece back together the irreparable damage to her shattered head. And so I cast you out. 0111 spoke, pointing the barrel down at Lauren's spine, so that you may once again find peace with God our Lord and Savior, and the angels on heaven and on earth shall rejoice. No, 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 wait, stop! Dahmer cried over the speaker. 0111, you're, you're the winner, do not kill- she pulled the trigger back, bullets littering O2 until the blood ceased to swirl, stopping dead and falling to the ground with wet splatters. Dead silence. Ah, <sighs> damn it. Dahmer finally laughed over the speaker. <laughs> Who am I supposed to test on now? Ugh, you big shots like to get back at me by doing that, don't you? It's starting to wear on my patience. 0111 said nothing, just picked back up her jacket and bowed her head in prayer. Her tendrils moved rapidly to collect her various weapons and store them neatly back inside her jacket. 
She used distortions to recollect what bullets and shells she could from Lauren's body, and methodically kept her head bowed as she reloaded the mags and strapped them to her hips. In any regard, Dahmer sighed, Isa is the winner. Great work out there today, but if you disobey an order from me again, it'll be your last chance, alright? Little rascal. Ta-ta for now. The lights of the room went dark.